We'll be using our database for guidance on how to fit this Blue Guns 1911A1 simulator. You can find the data under Colt 1911A1 RIA clone dated March 5th, 2019. First off, even with a simulator, let's make really sure all of the ammo is out of the pistol and the ammo is away from our bench. This carrier was already set to Y-clone. If you're unfamiliar with width modes, check out the video and the instruction manual that's available on the fitting page. The width lock screws should be loosened slightly, even if the width lock is already in the proper mode. Now, examine the picture of the open carrier that's in the database. Now place your pistol in the carrier in roughly the same position as is shown in the picture. Close the carrier and hold the two side plates roughly parallel. Then snug down the two screws for the width adjustment. They don't need to be too tight right now. For the next few steps, you'll need to locate holes on the side panels. This printable locator map is available on the fitting page. Grid coordinates are also molded into the carrier's side plates. Registration pins and the anchor always go on the inside panel, the one that goes towards your body. There's also a handy illustration in the manual that shows conventions for parts names and handedness. Here, we use the coordinates embossed in the left side plate to find the position. Loosely attach a registration pin to the screw. You can start the screw through either side of the registration pin. This fitting calls for a second registration pin in F14. This pin should also be mounted loosely for the time being. Hole C9 is given as the location for the anchor and the lock shaft. We'll mount the anchor first. Take special note that there's a star lock washer used with the anchor assembly. There are many lock washers supplied in the discovery package because they can be used on almost every bolt in the assembly. There is, however, only one location where a lock washer is absolutely needed. That location is between the side plate and the anchor.
failure to use a lock washer in this location could result in the lock being unable to open when needed. Install the anchor over the lock washer with its broad lugs away from the side plate. As with the registration pins, leave the anchor loose for now. This fit calls for a medium length shaft. Note the notch on the shaft. The shaft always goes through the opposite side plate toward the anchor's center. This method eliminates the need to look up the whole position of the shaft using the database. Choose the lock lever that suits your needs for the day. Although the picture in the database shows a two-tabbed lever, I'm choosing a one-tabbed lever today. It makes no difference on how the lock works. But with the one tab lever, you need to make sure that that one tab is pointing in the direction that you want it to go. Today I am choosing the level 3 lock shroud just like in the picture, but I could just as easily use a level 2 lock shroud. The anchor and shaft location also pretty much dictates the location of the shroud and where the screws go. Make sure that your level 3 shroud's finger guard is pointing toward the muzzle of the pistol. The level 2 shroud's orientation isn't terribly important. The screw holes for both shrouds must always align either along a lettered or a numbered row of holes on the grid. Shroud screws are always two holes away from the shaft in both directions along the proper row. Notice how I close the carrier and then push the Allen wrench through the opposite side to line up with the screws of the shroud. This trick makes it really easy to keep the tool aligned with the screws. Tighten shroud screws firmly. Do a quick check of the lever and the toggle lock to be sure everything's okay. The final step of initial assembly for the lock is the placement of the trigger guard stop. This is a critical operation. Take a close look at the cutaway drawing. It's really important that the set screw be fully placed inside the slot of the shaft. There's two tricks to getting good alignment. The first trick is to make sure that the hex key and the lock shaft are parallel to each other. The second one is to make sure that the lock shaft's end is flush with the trigger guard stop as shown in the cutaway joint. Once aligned, use very firm torque using the short side of your Allen wrench. Holding the short end of the wrench limits the torque that you can put on this critical part, and that's good. Be very aggressive while you're checking the lock between the trigger guard stop and the shaft. There should be no movement of the trigger guard stop about the shaft. There's just a couple easy steps to adjusting the lock. First, make sure that the anchor is quite loose on its screw. Then fully close and engage the lock so that it's in the fully locked condition. 
The loose anchor will normally rotate with the trigger guard stop. If it doesn't, use your Allen wrench to swing it into position as shown in the illustration. Hold the lock in its fully locked condition and then with the Allen wrench use very heavy torque to tighten the anchor. Do several full function checks on the lock. It should work perfectly. Double check for full engagement of the anchor and the trigger guard stop. Now, take your unloaded pistol and fit it to the left side plate. The registration pins should still be loose. But do a full cycle locked to unlocked test just to be sure things are still about right. Now hold the carrier loosely so the firearm can naturally fall onto the registration plate. Starting with the registration pin that's closest to the muzzle, use your Allen wrench to firmly tighten it into position. The whole idea is to have the registration pins hold the top of the pistol into firm contact with the registration plate. At this point you should have a pistol that fits well with not much slop and a lock system that operates freely and reliably. Fine tune the fit by adjusting the width lock. First, fully loosen both of the cap screws. Hold the side plates with very light pressure while assisting the action springs to close the carrier completely. Now finally tighten both width adjustment screws. Do another function check before moving on. At this point, fit and function should be about as good as you can make it. Select the thin adapter plate unless you need clearance for pistol controls or your hands. If there's issues, the thick adapter plate should do the job. Now apply your chosen body attachment part. Your final function check should also include an inspection of the interior of the carrier to be sure there's nothing there that might damage your firearm. Remember to do your first several draw and recovery checks with an unloaded weapon.